Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Folks Brow. In today's episode we're going to continue with our series on the piano restoration. We've got to a point where we now have to start setting the basically the action of the key so uh, we have to set the lost motion uh, the depth the key height the, the, the levelness of the keys in comparison to each other the gap between the keys uh, when the, it stops and when it takes off but before we do any of that um, it is now time to actually finish up and uh, sort out our hammers so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring you as a close-up so you can see what I actually want to do so what I want to do is I want to uh, get rid of the indents on the hammers from from the years of playing obviously the the hammers make indents on the strings and uh, so it gets worn in so before we even carry on anywhere near here it would be a good idea to get all the hammers nicely evened so that their takeoff position or their uh, their at rest position is all going to be the same so then we can set our hammer blow finally and if there is any uh, sticking any alignment of the hammers to be done then we can do that at the same time so let me zoom in and show you what it is that we actually want to do right I'm holding this by hand so excuse the shaking but what you can see is you can see the string indents on on the hammers I'm just going to move over so you can see all of them and they're not all the same height so all of them have got string indents so we actually have to take that out so I'm just going to put you back on the tripod and show you how we're going to do this right so what I've done is I've cut myself a, a little strip of uh, sandpaper not uh, amazingly uh, rough I've got the 600 grit you could probably go with a little bit rougher 500 grit and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sandpaper behind here like this and I'm just going to just gently I don't want to change the profile of the hammer because the hammer is not is not exactly rounded and it's not it's a little bit uh, flat on the front and I don't want to go too hard and stress it I just want to do this like this and that takes out the worst of the string indent on the on the hammer itself like I say you could probably go with something a bit rougher than uh, than the 600 I'm using you could probably go with a 500 yeah and that takes out the string indent but as you can see uh, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit it leaves a lot of fluff and stuff behind so we will have to come back and vacuum so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way through all the hammers quickly and take that off and I will come back and show you what they look like then and what we're going to continue with after that so I'm just going to go profile all the hammer faces quickly right so we're back uh, we've 
gone and uh, taken care of all the hammerheads. Um, uh, not surprisingly, it sounds uh, a lot brighter, much easier to play. Uh, I'm going to play the same uh, uh, little chord sequence CF, G, F. Um, I just want you to notice, okay, first of all you get the sound, how much brighter it sounds, but uh, what I'm actually looking at when I'm playing this is I'm looking at, if you can see where all the notes when they're played, where they come back and where they come to rest, I'm also looking at the hammer backstops, are they in the same position, so if I look at it like that, you can see pretty much they're all in the same position and the heads are almost all in the same position. So I'm, I'm just looking at that. I'm playing even effort on each key. I'm not uh, accentu accentuating the bass or anything uh, or, the, or the treble. So we'll just start with the with the intro part, which is actually very easy. And you can hear this is relatively bright now. then we come to our chord sequence. So I'm going to play this, uh, well, a little bit of a bridge. I'm going to play this twice uh, where I just use the single F as a bass and twice where I use the, uh, uh, the lower F as well in the bass, uh, just so I can also see these keys. And interesting, I want you to pay, uh, keep a lookout for this uh, C. It actually rings through very, very brightly now. So, um, Keys are ringing out. Well, our notes are ringing out uh, nicely, a lot, a lot brighter, which is good. Um, the hammers almost all. Uh, if I look at it like this, they almost have the same uh, return position. Even the hammer uh, backstops are pretty much in line. So that tells me with uh, setting the hammer blow, getting the dead uh, part of the hammer faces out. And remember we haven't, I've only basically set the, the last motion. So I don't think we will have much work to do with our takeoff positions and our, and our, our stop positions, which is a, a, a good thing. So what we're going to do now, I don't know if you can see down here, we're going to set the last motion. Now from now on, we're going to do, we're going to do this whole thing. So we're going to set the last motion. Now typically they say do five keys. So or three, or five whites, or uh, three whites, two blacks. So if we took like a C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. If we set these five, so we set the heights, we set the lost motion, uh, we set the travel, we set the, uh, the, the perpendicularness of the key so that the keys are perpendicular to each other, in other words, they're at the same right angle, and the gaps, we set the spacing. If we do it for these five, it will give us pretty much the measurements we need for the rest of the key, so it takes the guesswork out. Instead of us doing everything, getting it all perfectly and something's out, 
and then we have to come back and redo it. So what I'm thinking is to do it for, I don't know, it's, should we do, should we do an octave? Uh, yes, I think let's let's do an octave. So what I'm going to do is bring the the, the key uh, or the, the camera in so that you can see, and we're going to set the the lost action, and it's easier for me to show you from uh, from a, uh, a front uh, view of it. So we'll set the lost motion. It'll also give you an idea of what we need to do here with the keys. Let me bring the camera in and show you. By the way, the hammers to uh, to do that little bit of sanding it was typically roughly about half an hour, so not a lot of time. So let's bring the camera in. Right, so here we are close up to the keyboard and you can actually see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to play the C below middle, first bass C down here. You can see is my finger, it's this white note here. And I'm just touching the C, and what you can see is this backjack mo moving bef quite a bit before the hammer moves. Okay, there the hammer moves. But look at the movement on the backjack before the hammer goes. So that's a quite a bit of lost action. So. Again, this is up to you. On the key, we'll take it out. There's our capstan. If we want to reduce, we'll take out that lost motion, we can give it a little bit of a, give the capstan screw a little bit of a, a turn out. So I'm gonna go a tiny little bit clockwise, just a tad. I do like a bit of lost action. I don't like it completely dead. So it's still got quite a bit there before the hammer goes. We'll give it more of a turn out. I reckon you, depending how much you've got, maybe you should work in eight turns. Maybe another little bit of a turn. You can see how much the C sharp has got in comparison now to the to the C. So I'm going to leave the C like that and we'll take some out of the C sharp. Again, I reckon you should work in eight turns, especially when this is so close. These two are feeling the same now. The C shop's still got a bit more. I'll give it a smidgen of a turn there. The D. He's got a little bit, so we'll give it a tiny little turn there. I've taken almost all of it out. Okay. D sharp is about the same, very little. For those of you not aware, 
they have uh, brought back our legal cigarettes. So yeah, it's our time. He's got a little bit, so we'll take it out. Just a smidge there. Too much on the E. Okay, the F. The F has got quite a bit. Still got quite a bit. A little bit more. It's all right. G is okay. G sharp. G sharp will take a little bit out. Bumping you there. G, G sharp. Not enough. take out quite a bit. bit I'll leave that I'll let it ride C a little bit C sharp I'll let it ride. D, I'll let it ride. E sharp, I'll let it ride. Let's move the camera over so you can see. E, I'll let it ride. F has got a bit.
You know, I'll take that actually. I'll take a little bit of that. That's it, he's gone. If we'll take a little bit out. Of course, the moral of the story here is never let your piano get to this condition. F is fine. F sharp has got a little bit. Out. G is okay. G sharp is okay. A sharp is A is fine. A natural. A sharp. B. C. C's got a little bit too much. Oh, sorry for bumping you there. on that C. Still a bit more on that C. A little bit more. Ten more. Perfect, there, yeah, that's about right for me. My right, so now that we've uh, set our last motion, remember we said we're going to work on uh, two octaves. The next thing that I'm going to do, and we'll need to order, I'm just going to move you back, I'm going to have to order some. Uh, some spaces so what I'll do is I'll take a note out to show you uh, but before I do that the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a bit of sunlight soap some water mix the two together very little sunlight soap and I'm just going to clean the keys and after I've done that I will clean them I will just wipe it down with some normal water and then just dry cloth. Uh, when you're going to clean them, push the three down and clean the middle one. Uh, you don't want the sunlight soap going in there. Anyway, so if I take this E key out, I just want to show you. Okay, first of all, we're going to set the height. I'm going to put a ruler. We'll come back. Um, we'll put a ruler on it. And to set the height of the key is actually very easy. If we look at the key and I take it out, 
we have a rail down here and you might be able to see there's a little white uh, bushing spacer in there and we have a green bushing spacer down here we'll forget about the green one for now this middle pin is what we call the balancing pin if we look at the key it goes in there that's the midway point so to set the height of the key in other words this point here how high it is we put a bushing spacer on there now i don't have those bushing spaces and so I will have to order them and try and get them to South Africa rather quickly. But by setting, uh, by putting that spacer in there, we can now set the height and we can make all the keys in our octave. Remember we said C uh, below middle C is what we've tuned up to, I think, C itself. Or well, that's what we set the the last motion for so we will do the same octave again or two octaves whatever we did we'll do the same and we'll set now the height but first i'm going to clean them i'm not going to make a video of that i will order the spaces and we'll come back and we'll set the height together uh, that should be pretty quick um, so we'll set both heights uh, for the We'll first set the white keys in octave, and then we'll set the black keys. And uh, then we'll go back, we'll check our last motion. If we're happy with that, we will now set our let off. And if we're happy with that, we'll set the white key dips and the black key dips. The, that is basically how far the key can go down. And we set that by changing that bushing in there. So, yeah, let me, let me order that. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you had fun. Uh, the sound is getting a lot better and the playability of the piano is getting much, much better. So we, we're getting there. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then, take care. Be safe. Cheers.